right, welcome to Solving Linear Equations Day 2. So it's pretty similar to the last day, but it's a little bit more difficult of a problem. So we're still going to solve each equation and write the properties that justify each step. So as you can see, there are parentheses in our equation. So when there are parentheses, usually what you need to do is combine stuff. So in this case, we're going to combine things through distributive property. So we do distributive property when there's a number in the front of a parentheses, so in this case negative one-thirds, and you need to distribute it to everything inside the parentheses. And we're also going to do that to the right side where there is a negative five outside the parentheses. Whenever you have something outside the parentheses, you need to distribute it to the inside of the parentheses, distribute it to everything. So this is called distributive property. So you just need to distribute everything inside. So let's do, let's actually do it. So the first one on the left side has a negative one third distributed to a negative, um, distributed to a six X. That means negative one third multiplied to six X, negative one third multiplied by six X. So since it's a negative one third, a fraction is a division problem. A fraction is always a division problem. In this case, we are dividing by three. So really what we have here is a negative six X divided by three. So we have a negative six X divided by three, which gives us negative two X. Now let's distribute that negative one third to the negative 21. So we have a negative negative 21, so that's a positive 21, divided by 3. Positive 21 divided by 3, and that gives you 7. So once again, when you have a negative 1 third multiplied to all that stuff, it's really a negative, that number, divided by 3. So we had a negative 6x divided by 3, and then we had a negative negative 21, so positive 21, divided by 3. That's how we got negative 2x plus 7. The right side's a little bit more straightforward, hopefully, because I know people don't like fractions, but this is a whole number. So a negative 5 multiplied to the x is a negative 5x, and a negative 5 multiplied to the 1 is a minus 5. So that brings us to the next step, where we want to combine all the x's to one side. So we have a negative 2x term on the left, we have a negative 5x term on the right. We want to add 5x. So we bring everything to one side, all the x's, all the x terms to one side. That will give us 3x plus 7 equals, cancel out, negative 5. Then you want to subtract 7 because you want the x to be by itself. So we have 3x plus 7. Let's get rid of that 7. Subtract 7. We get 3x equals negative 12. And finally, x is being multiplied to 3. So the opposite of multiplying is divide by 3. So we divide by 3. Those cancel out. We'll get x is equal to negative 4. All right, so that was the first one. Let's take a look at the next one. So yes, there are parentheses, but there's nothing outside the parentheses, so we're not distributing. What we want to do is combine the fractions. So we have a negative 15x minus one over three plus four over three. So luckily for us, both of these are over three, which means we don't have to change the fraction in any way. We can just add them straight across. I'm gonna call that combining fractions. So when you combine fractions by adding or subtracting, you want to make sure that the denominator, the bottom number, is the same. In this case, we have a 3 and a 3, so they are the same. We can combine them. So the left side still stays as 5x plus 7. And then on the right side, we have negative 15x minus 1 and 4. We can combine those two because they are like terms. Both of those do not have the x variable attached to it. Both of them are just the number, so we can combine those. What is negative 1 plus 4? Negative 1 plus 4. That will give us 
3. Okay, so here we have our combined fraction. After we've combined the fraction, we want to actually divide by 3. So you can think of this as a one-third, because remember I said a fraction is a division problem. You can think of this as a one-third times negative 15x plus 3. So we're going to divide everything inside the fraction on the numerator by 3, okay? I'm going to call that simplifying fraction. All right, so the left side still stays the same. We haven't done anything with it yet, but let's simplify our fraction. So we have negative 15x divided by three. What does that give us? Negative 15x divided by three gives us negative five x. We also have three divided by three. And what does that give us? That gives us a positive one. So we've simplified our fraction. Now we got 5x plus 7 equals negative 5x plus 1. Now I want us to bring both x terms to the same side. So right now we have two x terms. They're on different sides. We're going to add 5x to both sides so that we can cancel out the blue 5x. So we add 5x to both sides. We get 10x plus 7 is equal to cancel is equal to 1. After that, we want to subtract 7. Oops. Then that gives us 10x. Those cancel out equals negative 6. And then we may divide by 10. That gives us x is equal to negative 6 over 10. However, this is not a simplified fraction yet because negative 6 and 10 both are divisible by 2. So they have the greatest common factor of 2. So I'm going to need to simplify fraction again. So in this case, we're going to divide by 2 on both the top and bottom to help us simplify our fraction. So 6 negative 6 divided by 2 gives us negative 3 and 10 divided by 2 gives us 5 so x equals negative 3 fifths as our final answer